Let's carefully study the price elasticity of demand when demand is a linear function. We will do this in general notation, so Q is equal to A minus B times P, where A and B are arbitrary positive constants. For a linear demand function, demand will eventually become negative if prices are large enough, so we need to restrict P to lie between 0 and A over B. This will guarantee that Q is greater than or equal to zero. If you plug in P equal to A over B into the demand function, then you get A minus B times A over B, which is A minus A, which is zero. To find the price elasticity of demand, we first need the derivative. The QDP is equal to minus B, and this is negative. The price elasticity of demand is this derivative times P over Q, or minus B times P over A minus BP. In the next slide, I will make a graph of the demand curve, which is a graph of the inverse demand function. The inverse demand function is given by P equal to A over B minus Q over B. You find this result simply by solving the equation Q equal to A minus BP for P. For the inverse demand function, Q must be between 0 and A. Let's have a look at the demand curve and how the price elasticity of demand varies along this curve. We do price along the y-axis and quantity along the x-axis, as is the uncomfortable norm in microeconomics. The demand curve is a straight line, the graph of the inverse demand function, P equal to A over B minus Q over B. The intercept is A over B, the slope is minus 1 over B, and the demand curve intersects the x-axis at Q equal to A. The first thing I want to demonstrate is that the price elasticity of demand is exactly minus 1 at the middle of this curve. At the middle of the demand curve, Q is equal to half of its maximum value, or A over 2. The maximum price is A over B, and half of that is A over 2B. These are the coordinates of the point which is located right at the middle of the demand curve. At this point, epsilon is exactly equal to minus 1, and this is true for all linear demand curves. To see this, remember that epsilon is dqdp times p over q. dqdp is equal to minus b. At the middle of the demand curve, p is a over b divided by 2, and q is a over 2. A over B divided by 2 is the same thing as A divided by 2B. To simplify this, remember the formula for the ratio of two fractions. We get minus B times A over 2B multiplied by the inverse of the denominator, 2 over A. The A's will cancel, the B's will cancel, and the 2's will cancel, leaving us with just minus 1. As we move upwards and to the left along the demand curve, demand will become elastic. This is not hard to see. As we move from the middle up and to the left, the QDP does not change. P increases and Q falls, so the absolute value of epsilon must increase. If we increase the price by 1% in this region, demand will fall by more than 1%. We are in the rubber band region of the demand curve. If we go all the way to the intercept, Q is zero and epsilon is not defined. The limit of epsilon as Q goes to zero is minus infinity, so we sometimes say that epsilon is minus infinity at Q equal to zero. Moving from the middle down and to the right, the absolute value of epsilon will decrease and demand becomes inelastic. Same reason, the QDP does not change, P falls and Q increases, so the ratio P over Q falls. Increasing the price by 1% in this region will lead to a decrease in demand by less than 1%. Think of this as the stiff region of the demand curve. When Q is at its maximum value A, then P is equal to zero and epsilon is zero as well. Now, you may find it confusing that the QDP is minus B, while the slope of the demand curve is minus one over B. Keep in mind that the QDP is the slope of the demand function, and the graph of the demand function has Q on the y-axis and P on the x-axis. What we have drawn here is a graph of the inverse demand function, not a graph of the demand function. 
we can have a look at a specific example of a linear demand function, which may be a little bit easier to understand. Say that a is equal to 20 and b is equal to 2, and our demand function is q equal to 20 minus 2p, where p can be between 0 and 10. If we solve for p, we get the inverse demand function, p equal to 10 minus q over 2, and this is valid for q between 0 and 20. dq dp is minus 2, so epsilon is minus 2 p over q, or minus 2 p over 20 minus 2 p. Divide both sides by 2 and epsilon is minus p over 10 minus p. p is equal to 5 at the middle of the demand curve and 5 over 10 minus 5 is equal to 1. So the absolute value of epsilon is 1 at the middle of the demand curve. If you try any p greater than 5, say 6, then epsilon is minus 6 over 4 or minus 1.5. The absolute value of epsilon is greater than 1 and demand is elastic. Try p less than 5, say p equal to 4, then epsilon is minus 4 over 6 or minus 2 over 3. The absolute value of epsilon is less than 1 and demand is inelastic. Also note how the absolute value of epsilon continuously falls as we move along the demand curve from the upper left down and to the right.